Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you've brought us here today. And we pray that uh, in the words that we speak, in the thoughts of our minds, that you will be glorified. And we thank you for bringing Claire to us. That uh, we may have a laugh, but we'll also leave here knowing not only that we've met uh, with each other, but that we have met with you. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Over to you, uh, what, hey? Rev. <laughs> You need to stand on the centre stage there. <laughs> oh, I think you'll find I can occupy centre stage from here. Really uh, well. no, she, can do, she can do it quite well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who wasn't going to speak? <laughs> right, would you like to know a little bit about me before we start? Would that help? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, you can say no, in which case we'll just, just dive straight into something completely different. We don't want to be Christians, we're well, trying not to be all manic. Except me. Except you, okay. yeah. Um, I'm originally from the Midlands and uh, started life as an engineer uh, and worked for um, Powergen and then E.ON as they became. Uh, started sort of working on a power station and then uh, gradually moved over to their headquarters and spent a lot of my life on the commercial side, doing all sorts of wind, wonderful things, wind farm development and running combined heat and power schemes and, and uh, ended up on their trading floor doing trading arrangements stuff. Um, so I had quite an interesting time of it, uh, mainly work with blokes rather than women, um, which becomes of note later. And uh, I had been brought up as a Christian. My family lived on an estate where, you know, the Lord of the Manor still lived, admittedly in the vicarage in the old rectory, not in the in the big house because they'd had to sort of get rid of that for financial reasons. But uh, so I was brought brought up on an estate. So think back to like between the wars, really. It was like when I was growing up. And so we went to church because you didn't get a house and, um, unless you went to church. You had to be a good, upright member of the community. So we used to go to church. Um, there weren't a lot of other children there. If I wasn't there, generally the youngest person there was my mum. And uh, we did everything. Book of Common Prayer, Thee, Thou, Thy, all the rest of it. The proper um, language, proper, which God, pro God's, God proper speaks language like that. which God spoke, because we all know that God didn't speak in anything else other <laughs> than sort of six, 15th century and 16th King James, the <laughs> common prayer language. With a bit of Yorkshire. <laughs> oh, if God was a Yorkshireman, the play world would be a bit smaller place. <laughs> I worked in Yorkshire for a while um, and I like Yorkshire very much and Lancashire just to be controversial um, we don't like Lancashire <laughs> uh, you see you love everybody them. love your neighbour <laughs> and so um, I'd sort of been brought up Christian and, and, and uh, hanging around on the edges of churches it was a bit of a shock when I went to university and discovered people use like not 16th century English to talk to God that was a bit weird. It took me a while to get my head around that. Then I went, uh, I got taken along to the Christian Union and discovered that people sang very jolly songs with their hands in the air. <laughs> yeah? And that was a bit of a shock to the system as well. And then I discovered that I could quite enjoy singing jolly songs with my hands in the air, which, which was great, but I still quite liked other stuff as well mm. that most of the people who, who did this didn't necessarily like. So anyway, I, I meandered my way gently through uh, not really going to church uh, very much at all once I left university for a long and complicated reason. And then um, got married and eventually had my first child and realised when faced with this little scrap that if I didn't take him to church, nobody else was going to. It's a bit of a horrible, responsible feeling really that suddenly if you, if you don't talk to this little one about God then nobody will. So I thought, well, I'd better go and try my parish church. So I went in, and it turned out it was the new first. It was the new vicar's first day. So this poor bloke was faced with all these people he didn't know, trying desperately to get hold of people's names, who was related to who, 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 who was doing what, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I was shaking everybody's hands. Who are you? What do you do? How do you fit into church? And then got faced with me, with James tucked under my arm. And uh, said, hello, who are you? And I said, it's all right, you needn't worry about me. I'm not anybody. 
And he said, I'm sure you must be somebody. I said, yes, but I'm new. Oh, good, so am I. So I went back and uh, for anybody who knows me, to know that my first job in church was to be on the crash rotor is absolutely hysterically funny. I am not naturally good with children. That would be an understatement. And uh, it, it's a classic thing where you get identified at a certain stage in life as being expected to do certain things, yeah? So you're, you're a young married mum, you must want to go on the crash rotor. I'd rather have gnawed my own arm off than gone on the, the crash rotor. But anyway, that's where I ended up. And uh, so I stayed very politely in all the appropriate church boxes for quite some time. And uh, so that meant when my kids got older, I got to do junior church. Something where, again, I'd rather gnaw my own arm off <laughs> than have to do junior church. But some people are brilliant and gifted with children. <laughs> some people are born and that's their calling and that's their vocation. And that's brilliant, and I am so grateful for them because not only do they do a fantastic job, but it means that well, I, I don't can concentrate to. on my <laughs> stuff. Oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I, I got involved in that. And um, all through this, I was sort of having what's laughingly known as a career and working my way gently up the greasy corporate pole. And uh, then my company, bless them, which is no better and no worse than any other large corporation anywhere in the UK, so far as I can find out, um, decided it was going to introduce corporate values. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Visions, missions, corporate uh. values. So we had the corporate values which we would live by, and they were something like honesty, openness, integrity, and a couple of others that I can't remember. And there was nothing wrong with any of them. Nothing wrong with them. But I thought, I've got my own values. I don't want to have to live by yours. You know, I've got mine. I've got Christ. What do I want with your values? So uh, that started me on the slippery slope of wondering whether I really ought to be there. Which started me on the slippery slope of wondering where I really ought to be. And eventually I said to a very dear friend, do you know, I'm wondering if God is calling me to be a rooker. And she said, to be a what? And I said, to be a rooker. And she said, I still can't hear you, Clay. I have to say that more clearly. <laughs> 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 and I said, to be a rooker. And she eventually took my arm and held it. And I said, now say it. I said, to be a vicar. And she didn't laugh. And I it was expecting her to fall about laughing, tell me to get back in my box, get on with life and get on with it. And that didn't happen. Which was a bit of a bitter blow, really. Because <laughs> that would have been so nice if she had just laughed. So I, she said, you're going to have to talk to the vicar. So I went off and talked to the vicar, who by now was not new and knew who I was and had seen me through various things. And, uh, and I was wondering about being a vicar. And he said, what? <laughs> vicar! And he went, yes, I wondered when you'd get round to it. <laughs> another total failure to fall about laughing. And I thought, this is ridiculous. Somebody's got to laugh sooner or later. So it went through a um, wonderful, long and complicated discernment process. The Anglican Church has an, a system of diocesan mm -hmm. directors of ordinance. So every diocese has somebody responsible for bringing on vocations. And, so, long time chat talking to the DDO, who also didn't laugh. And then eventually I got sent to selection, which was like a very long three day interview with added prayers. And they didn't laugh. And the rest is history. So, I trained at Queen's in Birmingham, um, which is an ecumen the Queen's Foundation for Ecumenical Theological ed ed Education. So, we trained with everybody. Did they laugh? By any chance? No. No. <laughs> no, it was really, well, with me a lot, yes. Occasionally at me, but never about my vocation. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, that was that. And when it came to trying to find a, a training post, once I'd done, I carried on working while I was training for three years. And uh, then when it came to finding a training post, uh, there wasn't one for me in Birmingham Diocese. They did, well, they didn't laugh, but they sort of said, we don't really have anywhere for you your particular gifts and needs. So um, I started looking out um, around the place and landed down in Winchester Diocese and here I am. 
which is a very long-winded way of telling you something about me. No, but it isn't. It's very good. It is very good. Very good. Can I ask you a question? Did yes, you, please do, because I was hoping for of, conversation. <laughs> did you face any sort of tough challenges? You know, did you face any, any rejection from men? Uh, oh, yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not my problem, yeah. really. It, my my, my yeah. church, a branch of it, accepts women. Yeah. I'm yeah. female. They've yeah. acquired me, you know, I've acquired yeah. one of these. Yeah. And God's ministry is there, out there for everybody. Oh, I agree. I and agree. So yeah. I'm there doing my best to show a bit of God's love in the world. And if yeah. people don't want that from me, then they'll go and find it from where it suits them. Because my my style wouldn't suit everybody. So there'll be women who don't like me as well. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah. Which you know is is fine. People are allowed not to not to want yeah. Yeah. That, that that from me. Um, we we have people in our congregations who, um, for example, won't accept Eucharist. For, won't accept bread and wine from a woman. Yeah. Um, so I do occasionally preside when they haven't read the rotor right and they'll come and they'll sit at the back and they'll either walk in and walk out again before the service starts or they'll just sit through and not come forward yeah. when it's time for bread and wine. Our, son, and, our mm. eldest son was married by a female <coughs> vicar. She, she was lovely really, wasn't she? Yeah. It's funny, two, two, yeah, I was in the church wing for ten years before I went to Moorlands mm. and um, two, two ladies who were in that congregation got called for ordination. <coughs> yeah, both, both very strongly called, so it was good, yeah. 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 I, I, th I think God's where, a lot of, uh, yeah, where, right. where I find it really sad is for the women who were called who couldn't answer. Yeah. Right. And uh, we are still living with the legacy of that in people who, who are in their 70s and 80s now, women, who, weren't who, who were called that... but couldn't go forward mm. because at that point the church didn't do women so they just got told, no, you must have misread your calling. I, mean, in my I think there's a lot of men that's called that never answered and I think there's a lot of men that's called well, you shouldn't read <laughs> That's answered that wasn't called. <laughs> no, I think there's, no, there's a lot that. of yeah. people that shouldn't be pastors. There's a lot yeah. of people out there that should have been. Mm. You, you know, it's, we miss it sometimes, don't we? Yeah, I, I think it, it can be it can be really hard hearing what God wants you to do. Yeah. Um, either because you hear it quite clearly and you really, really, really don't want to do it. And there's a yeah. great history of that, yeah. where if you look at Moses, <laughs> who was so keen rushing forward, wasn't he, and, and, and had to have his brother to hold his hand and speak for him because he didn't want to, didn't want to do it himself. Well, under um, the circumstances, you can't blame him. Can you? <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a toughie, that one, wasn't it? Yeah, it, yeah. it was quite a tough gig, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, Aaron, I, I saw this bush burning and it wasn't, con wasn't consumed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then God spoke, and I really didn't like the sound of it. Now I've got the old Egyptian army trying to get me. Yeah. You need to stop being funny. <laughs> yeah, but I bet they laughed at him, don't you? I bet they did. Yeah, but the, the whole women thing has has not been a particular issue for me because I come out of a background of working with men. Yeah, I you know, on the power yeah. station there were six hundred blokes and me and the canteen staff yeah. who were women. So. You know, it, the, from f to, from that respect, I'm quite used to being in a misogynist organisation that you have to be yeah. three times as good to even be acknowledged as. Um, in my finest moment on a power station to this day was when um, a contractor came on site, and it was always fine working with the blokes who knew me, because that you know it wasn't an issue then. But for the ones who came in new, it was much harder. And I remember the the, the conversation that I overheard that went, "Who's that woman over there? What woman over what?" That woman over there. What woman? That woman over there. <laughs> oh! No, that's not a woman, that's our clerk. <laughs> <laughs> which, according to my feminist sisters, should have had me crying and slashing my wrists on the ground, instead of which I thought that was the highest form of acceptance I was ever going to get on that <laughs> So, you know, to be accepted for who you are, rather than what yeah. gender you are, is, yeah, is, good, is yeah. really, good, yeah. really important. Yeah. And I, I think I learned from that, that you, you can be accepted for, for who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm Claire-shaped and God called me, and I'm hoping there's a Claire-shaped hole I can go and hide in one day. Yeah. But, you know, that, that, that's, he <coughs> called me. And yes, mm -hmm. I've had all sorts of formational experiences along mm -hmm. the way, but I'm still essentially me. Mm -hmm. And so you hope that God will use me. Mm. rather than me trying to turn myself into some sort of pseudo bloke. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Child ministry. Some people called into child ministry. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, still got time for that. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm actually a whole lot better with toddlers than I used to be. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm very good on baptisms now. So, so I'm hoping that as my kids get much, much older. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly, I seem to be about 20 years behind. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that God is listening right yes. now. Right? <laughs> he says, oh yeah, we'll stitch her up. No. <laughs> Nobody knows that God has a sense of humour better than me. <laughs> I know he has, he's kept me here for 22 years. Do you find that, that a danger, you know, because you're like the female among them, but you put the kettle on, you don't get treated that way? Not today. No, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, only if they're feeling really brave. <laughs> <laughs> Greaseproof paper sandwiches. Oh yes, yes. I you should have enough You'll have to try that for your tuna group. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't Yeah. <laughs> I mean, occasionally, if, it's, you know, if you're doing a funeral visit to somebody, sometimes, yeah, you need to be there and put the yeah, kettle on and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, sort them yeah, out, yeah. And, yeah. and that's what they need. Yeah, so you, you, it's yeah. just about working it's out yeah. where people are and yeah. go and meet them there. Yeah, it mm -hmm. is, yeah. So, yeah, all things for all people. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely, yeah. Certainly yeah. didn't sit and wait in a church for them to No, he didn't come in. He went out and met people all sorts of places. Did you go to church, Steve? I went to the synagogue a lot. Yeah. I cleared the temple once or twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, still, yeah, yeah. I still want to know what they thought he was doing while he was making the whips for two or three or four days. <laughs> yeah, he worked at a chippy. Yeah, a couple of yeah. chippies. <laughs> yeah. And it was Paul who notoriously used to go to the synagogue, get thrown out, go down by the river, meet, meet the women, set the church up, then get really, really, really annoying and then get flogged off and left for dead and move on to the next, next one. Which I always thought was quite... Mm. Quite spectacular. Isn't it? <laughs> very, very courageous or very stupid. Or so well, both. <laughs> stupid, well, we might close with prayer. Yeah. So, how can we pray for you? Oh. If you could pray that I'll meet the people who God wants me to meet, and that when I do, I'll be open to what God wants me to do with yeah. them. Yeah. Okay. Would that be? Is that we'll do that now for a couple of minutes. Yeah. That'll be really good. Okay. Thank you very much. No worries. <clears throat> Father, once again, we thank you that uh, you brought us here, and we know that you are with us because your Spirit is within us. I pray for Claire, thank you that she's been able to share some parts of her life and her calling. And may each one of us go away from here uh, encouraged by that. And we pray for her now that uh, as she meets the people that you would want her to meet and minister to, that you would give her uh, the words to say and the actions to do and give her a will that is in line with yours. Amen. And we pray this through Christ our Lord whom we serve together in the power of the Spirit who lives within each one of us to your glory. Amen. 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 <coughs> Father God, we thank you for Claire this day. 
We thank you for her visit, Lord, and for sharing her testimony. We thank you, Father God, most of all, because she was obedient to that calling, mm. which is tough enough for anybody, Lord, but it must be very tough for a female to answer that. And I ask you, Father God, that you just, you give her that strength that she needs now, Lord, to go out and do that calling, to be the person that you want her to be, and to meet the people that you want her to meet, Lord, and to do the very best she can, Lord, in you. And we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Lord, we do thank you for Claire's faithfulness, Lord, to respond to you. And Lord, um, just pray for Claire's future, Lord. Pray you give her an, uh, an ambition to, to serve you, to see you at work in the, in the people's lives that she comes across, Lord. Just pray, Lord, that you'd give her a real zeal and a, a courage and a faith that rests in you. Lord, thank you that you can use her mightily in the lives of the people she meets, Lord. And Lord, thank you that, um, Lord, as she shares her testimony, Lord, thank you that your call is on each one of us. Lord, help us walk in your spirit, we'll walk in your way, Lord, to, to surrender our own will for yours, that you would be uh, glorified in our lives. So, Lord, give us each the ambition and the zeal to, to, to do what Claire's done and to step out for you and to let you begin to live through our lives and our actions. Mm. And Lord, we give thanks to Claire and commit it to you again afresh this day. Mm. In your name. Amen. Amen. Let's say the benediction, shall we? May the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ and the love of God, God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.